Hi folks, Tim Conti here with Cloud Trusted Advisor. So if you reach this video, we're going to do a quick overview of the differences between Zoom phone and Microsoft Teams phone, also re referred to as Teams Voice or Microsoft PBX. When you are comparing the two, those are the 800 pound gorillas now in the unified communications as a service industry. Obviously, you can see by the picture here on the screen, the market is very convoluted. It's very crowded. There's a lot of players in here. And there's just one or two differences that separate these vendors from the other. And our job here at Cloud Trusted Advisors to help you understand what those differences are and why it might be important to your organization or vice versa. When we meet with you and we understand what's important to your organization, we help you find the one or two things that are different um, and these vendors that can fulfill your requirements. So I won't run you through our tool. What I'm gonna do is a quick trick here to quickly compare Microsoft and Zoom. So I'm going to deselect all the providers. I'm going to select Microsoft and I'm going to uh, click Zoom. And then I'm going to generate this matrix. And let me move my picture over here. So, boom, what we've done for you is quickly provided a full comparison research report. It's going to save you a ton of time by not having to research the market on your own. If you're early in your journey and you're figuring out, am I going to go Zoom phone? Am I going to do Microsoft E3 and add voice? Am I going Microsoft E5? But still comparing it to Zoom phone, you're in the right place here. So first and foremost, just the easy stuff like company headquarter, obviously not a tremendous amount of value there, number of employees. These are both publicly traded companies, which is important for a lot of our clients for transparency with a private company. You don't have access to financials and other things um, that you do with the public companies. Seats in service, obviously Zoom's got um, quite a few in terms of voice. I think these numbers have changed quite a bit. I would put these vendors pretty close to each other in terms of voice users. Um, the key acquisitions that they've made in the industry, where their data centers are located. This is important more if you're a global organization. So if you have um, locations outside of North America, um, the proximity of the provider's data centers to your end users in terms of call quality is going to be important. Almost all of our clients are deploying the service over their internet, private internet, public internet connection. Um, so it could be fiber, it could be cable internet, you name it. So it is important. And obviously Teams has got a little bit more in terms of data center built out. But again, if you're not global, then this really isn't going to matter in terms of call quality. Compatible handsets, this is a big one. You're going to probably leverage and use a headset where appropriate. Um, the headset technology is so great. And for me personally, I haven't picked up my physical phone in a long time. But we do come across a lot of projects where, for one we did recently, it was 500 um, users that we deployed on Zoom phone. But they did an interview and looked, asked their end users to fill out a sheet to determine do they even want a physical phone or do they were they comfortable with just a headset in a mobile app that goes on their smartphone and most are but if you do need phones or if you're looking to repurpose existing phones you can see what compatible handsets work with zoom phone and microsoft teams phone uh, zoom's on a proprietary platform so is microsoft so nothing there compliance is a big one we get this one all the time i want to be really clear here it is not up to these vendors for themselves to be compliant it is, can they make you compliant? And here's what I mean there. Let's say you're a healthcare company and you need to be HIPAA compliant. You might ask your Zoom, Zoom, are you HIPAA compliant? Zoom doesn't need to be HIPAA compliant. They, they're not a healthcare company, you are. So the question to ask and the question behind the question is, hey Zoom, hey Microsoft, do you provide the feature functionality in your offering to allow me to be compliant? That's a key differentiator. So just kind of some wordsmithing there, but definitely when you're looking at compliance, the question of the vendor isn't, are they compliant? It's, do they give you the tools to make you compliant? So contact center, kind of a big one here if you have one. If you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, both of these vendors are going in slightly different directions. Microsoft has been really quiet on contact center and what their plans are there. Now, any of the predominant uh, big providers out there for cloud contact center, like five nines and talk desk and nice and contact will work with Microsoft teams, some better than others. So definitely reach out to us and we've got research data and case studies on that. But Zoom's got direct integrations uh, via SIP trunks with a lot of these vendors that you see listed here, the ones I just listed. So the key difference being Microsoft doesn't really invest in the tech stack for integration. 
but Zoom has. And that can be really important going forward. If you want to keep and choose one provider for your phone underlying phone system and voice communications and your contact center, um, Zoom might give you um, a better option there for that piece. I'll kind of skip through here. Obviously, connecting your phone system um, to your CRM is going to make your company that much more productive to really utilize the full um, advances in the systems. When we connect these powerful systems from Microsoft and Zoom into your data where your customer data is stored, um, I can tell you that it's going to mean the world to a lot of members of your organization when you show them the integrations that are available and how you can serve your customers better. So we'll skip through a couple of these ones on here as well. Um, notable clients, these are both very large organizations, very large vendors. So they have some of the, you know, marquee names in the industry. Um, the top vertical markets they support, they're pretty much in all the major verticals, although Zoom and Microsoft tend to do a lot in education and healthcare, of course, but as you know, they're everywhere. Implementation overview, this is, a, this is important. Um, you'll find that you can probably stand up this system on your own depending on how complex your environment is. Um, I've had clients turn up Zoom phone in a matter of hours, but when you talk about heavy integrations and integrating door buzzers and overhead paging systems and all the things that your old phone system did for you, you've got to find a solution for that. It does probably make sense to do a paid implementation and Zoom offers their own resources, Zoom employees, to do the paid implementation, Microsoft relies on partners to do it. So you might not care either way on that. Me personally, I'd prefer to work with a vendor where it's their own people doing it. Um, these implementations uh, can be expensive. We can definitely help you negotiate those down uh, based on market rates, but uh, just keep in mind that Microsoft leverages partners for implementation versus Zoom does it in-house. And lastly, differentiation and pricing, which is gonna be the key differentiation. First, before pricing, I will tell you that if you are a Microsoft Office or a Microsoft suite, if you use their suite of products, um, it is fairly easy to turn voice on depending on E3 or E5 licensing. We spell out here what those differences are. If you're going E3 or E5, how that looks. The misconception that voice is free um, there is a misconception that voice is free with E5 with Microsoft. That is not the case. So you definitely want to do your homework there. Um, they use voice as a way to get you to purchase E5 because it's more expensive and puts more money in Microsoft's pockets. But that doesn't mean it's the right fit for you. You can easily drop down and stay at E3 and use Zoom phone for voice, which is what a lot of my customers do. Um, but if you're really invested in Microsoft and there's a strategic reason then Microsoft Teams Voice could be a really good solution for you. Back in the day, for many years, Microsoft paid no attention, so the SLAs weren't there. They've come a long way since then. If you look at Zoom Phone in terms of differentiation and pricing, their phone is very simple. They really mirrored what they've done in the video world and mirrored that in the phone system world. Um, very easy to, to deploy, very easy to consume, has all the feature functionality you'd be looking for. And they really have not a hundred license types like some vendors do. They've got just a few. Zoom United combines their phone and their video and their collaboration, or you could use collaboration like video from someone else like Microsoft and just do Zoom phone, which starts at $15 per month per license and goes down based on the size of your deployment. So that's what I have for you today. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it. If you have any questions on Zoom, Microsoft Voice, Zoom phone, or anything related to Unified Communications or Contact Center, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to help. Thank you. Have a good day.